Buenos nachos and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be working on this mysterious Xbox. Why is it so mysterious, you ask? Well, we don't have a date code. Apparently the date code is pretty much faded off or scratched off. I have an idea what's wrong with it, but I'm not gonna spoil it for you. So without further ado, let's begin. First things first, let's go ahead and begin by plugging this thing in. I don't know if you can hear that. Sounds pretty sizzly in there. That right there is probably the reason why Microsoft included that safety power brick. That was Microsoft's nightmare. So anyway, let's go ahead and open it up and see what's going on. No one has ever opened this Xbox before. This should be interesting. Oh man, I picked the wrong side to, uh, forgot about that. It's always this side right here. I always try my best to maintain the adhesive. All right. There we go. Let's go ahead and open this Bastage up. I believe it is the biggest Torx we have. Yep, so that's that one. The size, you ask? Well, I'm using a T15, but we probably could get away with something else. And I know a lot of people like to salvage these stickers, but you can always buy these stickers on Alibaba or from people on Etsy, so what's the point? Well, we have one screw right there, and then we have another over here. The Xbox looks like it's gonna be pretty dusty inside. I'm not looking forward to opening this thing up. All right, here comes the reveal. Well, it looks like Papa Roach is living in here. So stupid of a joke, Juan. But yes, looks like they had some problems with the Roaches. So it's a good thing I'm wearing gloves. Almost don't even want to touch it even though I am wearing gloves. You know what the amazing thing is, is this Xbox isn't going to look like this because pretty soon it's going to be completely refurbished. We'll take care of all this rust, all this dust, and all those cockroach droppings, but not in this video. Let's go ahead and continue here. Wish I wasn't so organized. I wouldn't have a problem getting these screws out. That was a T10, right? T8. Excuse me. Watch this one be a T10. Yep. So T10 is what you'll want to use. It helps to have these long driver bits here for these uh, screws that are hanging way low. So I'm gonna temporarily take this Xbox apart and then we're gonna see where that crackling noise is coming from. I already know what's going on, but we don't wanna ruin it for you folks at home. This wire kinda of feels a little brittle too. Very interesting. Yeah, this Xbox, I'll tell you, it has seen some better days. I don't think I've seen a nastier looking Xbox in quite some time. Even the super capacitor is leaking. Looks like it's not so super after all. You're not quite looking at the super capacitor yet, but you will be. So there it is. Man, it is clearly leaking. Yeah, it has corroded quite a bit in its vicinity. I almost don't even want to continue to work on this thing. But the problem with all that is, this is a perf, this, well, I mean, it's not a perfectly good Xbox right now, but it could be. For all we know, this drive works perfectly fine, and the drive alone is worth a million dollars. I mean, because you can't find a good laser anywhere. This Xbox, the amazing thing is, is that the roaches didn't seem to care very much for the, uh, I guess the motherboard on this thing, but they sure love the power supply, I'll tell you. I haven't seen it this bad in a long time, probably ever, look at that. The infestation is immense. We heard a noise coming from the power supply vicinity. So let's go ahead and see what the heck it is. So let's go ahead and plug in our power supply. Let's see once I can find the plug. So we clearly have a loose power connector. You can see that arcing happening as I'm moving this power cable. Maybe this thing will burst in the flames and I'll need the fire extinguisher. Well, uh, let's go ahead and take out this power supply, see what we can do with it. This Xbox did not want to turn on. I don't want to be a liar, so let's go ahead and plug it in. Oh, that doesn't sound the greatest. <laughs> Wow. You imagine this thing back in the early 2000s of burning your house down? Not making light of anyone that it happened to, but man, no wonder it was a legal catastrophe for Microsoft. Granted, it wasn't as bad as the Red Ring of Death, but that I'm aware of, none of those ever burned anyone's house down. So, just saying. All right, so let's go ahead and remove this power supply before it burns our building down, and let's see what's going on with it. And this power supply only has two screws. Nothing spectacular.
Yeah, looks like we had a couple of buddies hanging out down here in the bottom. Clearly something was bugging this Xbox out. So let's see what the, uh, the area that the power supply was sitting at so you can see some arcing happened in the past and well, I kind of helped it along today. Just so happened to have my fire extinguisher right there ready to go. Not that I think we'll need it. Uh, as for the damage on the power supply, let's take a look and see what we're dealing with here. So yes, we definitely have some crackled solder joints right here and this extreme arcing. And this one right here is also cracked. This one looks fine over here, but it was probably gonna start cracking the more this thing got used. We're not going to add any flummox quite yet. First, let's go ahead and clean up the arcing that happened over here. We'll probably etch back a little bit of this trace or this coating. That way we can make a better solder joint over here than what my Chronosoft did. When you open up one of these Xboxes, you probably should take a look at the power supply and make sure this connector is looking good because you do not want to have any problems with it. Why well, go through the trouble of modding your console with HDMI, RAM, CPU, USB, controller ports, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, only to see it burn your house down. Did you know that we do more than just console repair? We have video game consoles also for sale on our website that are already preloaded and ready to go. HDMI mods, hard drive upgrades, or perhaps you'd like to have a custom package put together for your particular console. You're welcome to go ahead and send us a request in the description below. We have a link that you can click on and you can go ahead and contact us via our contact form on our website. All right, so we've exposed some of the copper in this area so that we can build a better spot for this solder point here. Man, it looks like there was more than roaches inside of this thing. First things first, we're going to be adding some good old-fashioned flux, which means we're going to be turning on our vacuum. Wonder what would happen if I left it like this and left the alcohol on there and plugged it in. Bet you we'd see some explosions. <laughs> no, don't do that one. I have a fire extinguisher right there. I'm not gonna do that though. I've seen what happens. All right, so we're adding some good old fashioned Flemex to this. And of course it's not adhering because this thing is still wet with alcohol. And we're gonna use some good old fashioned leaded solder. So you know what, let's do this the correct way because I've heard it so many times and I don't want to see it in the comments. Let's go ahead and add more leaded solder first. So we're going to go ahead and use our desoldering pump and we're going to remove the solder that's currently on there. Because mixing the solder is not a good idea when you're dealing with high voltages. Alright, I think that'll do. We didn't get it all, but we got most of it, and I think adding the leaded solder will take care of any issues we may have. Alright, I think that's looking pretty good. We'll go ahead and clean up and some of the decayed cactus roaches that were there. This this whole power supply assembly needs a complete cleaning and refurbishment. The amazing thing is, is the capacitors don't look bad, but I'm sure if I hook up the capacitor tester to them, we'll find that they're not within spec, but they do look okay. Now you can power on the Xbox without having the screws in there, but I'm going to put the screws in just for safety purposes. I know some of you may want to be copying what I'm doing here. We wouldn't want to chance bad stuff happening. And I'm not responsible if you open up your console and burn your house down. Or don't set yourself on fire for that matter. Let's see what's going on here. Are we going to still get the crackling sound? Is this Xbox going to finally start working? Or the leaking capacitor is going to cause it to be haunted? Because that's clearly a symptom that happens these days. <laughs> Better get my fire extinguisher ready. All right, we're plugging it in. We're plugging it in. I can't see how to plug it in. I don't hear any sizzling or sparkling. Okay, momentous of truth. All right, here we go. Oh, oh, it has green amber. We all know we can't fix that issue. All right, so let's hook up an AV cable to it, seeing as how it's somewhat powering on. Man, I'm getting the cacus roaches carcass all over me. Well, we may not need this, so I'll just go ahead and set it down. I guess we can proceed to adding the hard drive and the DVD drive back in line. Now that we know this console is not going to burst into flames, or at least that's how it looks. I have seen some dirty consoles in my time, but this one takes the cake and eats it and decomposes it too. All right, so we're going to power it on and see what happens. 
As you can see, we solved the issue with the crackling on the power supply. It's no longer making all kinds of crackling noises and about ready to burst in the flames. However, we have no video on screen. Who knows, maybe we'll return to this console in the future and try and resolve the no video issue. Until next time.